So you just got your first gen and everybody's telling you do the fuel pin and gov spring. So with that, you'll be getting more fuel, obviously, and you can rev it out higher. So a lot more power and torque from this thing straight out of the box. But as soon as you start messing with the fuel, even those slight little mods, you might find another bottleneck. And that bottleneck is the lift pump. Full disclosure, I've teamed up with the Hungry Diesel for this video. Uh, this part was given to me at a discount, but this truck is in need of it, no doubt about it. You've seen us do an HX35W turbo fuel pin and gov spring, and this truck is not revving very high. We should easily be seeing this thing get over 3,000 RPMs uh, with sufficient power, but it's tapering off much before then. The stock truck is being starved of fuel because it is 30 years old, it has the fuel pin and gov spring, but it does not have a sufficient lift pump to supply enough fuel to that injection pump. That's where this comes in. And there are other aftermarket options for lift pumps, but this high volume lift pump gives a greater volume of fuel, obviously, but it does that without increasing the fuel pressure. And that's the problem with some other options, is now you have to look at upgrading other components in that fuel system uh, because it will be increasing the supply pressure. High volume lift pump takes care of that issue. It's a direct bolt-on, easy as that. Now this install starts at the right side of the engine block. Here we can see the old lift pump. We're gonna start by removing this banjo bolt that's connected to this fuel line. And then on the other end of the same fuel line at the lift pump, we're going to remove the fitting. As you can see, it's a bit of a struggle to do this with one hand, but I had to hold the camera, so. Then we can simply pull this line out of place and there it is. Next, we have two bolts on the outside of the lift pump, one on the left and one on the right. Just back these bolts out, it's easy as that. Here's what they look like when they're out. Next, we're going to remove this connector, just like that, and then the pump is free. Yeah, look at that thing. Now, don't get rid of this pump yet as we will need it a little later. But yeah, there she is. Okay, going back to the old hole, you can see the gasket that's stuck to the side. So what I did is I grabbed an old five in one and I ground a sharp edge on it so that I could take it, get down in that spot and scrape away that old gasket. Here's what it looks like after. Not absolutely perfect, but that's good enough. And here I'm trying to wedge the pump into place, but I can't, and here's why. So I lied a little bit when I said it was completely bolt-on. Unfortunately, it's hard to see in the video, but the top of the pump is rubbing up against the block a little bit. So it's not actually the cast iron, it is some insulation that's easily removable, well, relatively easily removable. Uh, you have to take something to grind that out. So I took a carbide burr and a 12 volt drill and leaned on it for a little bit. It didn't take but a few minutes and now there's plenty of clearance so we can move forward with installing this pump. Important note, make sure you cover up this hole so you don't get a bunch of insulation in there. But there's what it looks like. Now we have our gasket stack, two gaskets with a spacer in the middle. So pretty straightforward, stick one gasket on, then the spacer, and then finally the last gasket. And the cool thing about this is once you push the bolts through, these gaskets actually grab onto the threads of the bolts pretty easily. So nice retention there. And now we can slide this pump down into its final resting position. But we're gonna put those two bolts right back in the pump, same ones we took out of the old one. And we're just going to tighten those bolts down with a ratchet. Remember, don't throw away your old pump. You're going to want this connector up top to take it off. Get rid of all the old sealant tape and then here we just applied some new Teflon tape. Now we're going to thread this in by hand to get it started. And once it's hand tight, we're just going to snug it up with the open end wrench. Pretty straightforward. Next, snap the connector back into place. Now we're going to take our new fuel line, drop it into place, start it by hand, and then attempt to tighten it. Now we're gonna go back to our banjo bolt. We're gonna ream this guy out. Take an 11 64th drill bit and drill right through these holes. It'll open up those quote unquote jets and give you more fuel. And it's just one other possible bottleneck that we're getting rid of. So now we're gonna stick one of those washers on it 
and slide it through the banjo bolt. Get the other washer on the opposite side and tighten it up by hand. Then we're gonna snug it up with a box end wrench. Once we're done there, we're going to crack this little air bleeder valve uh, pretty close to that banjo bolt. Crack it open like that. Now we're gonna press on the plunger of our lift pump until not so much air comes out of here. Okay, a new pump is hooked up. All the fuel lines are back connected and we have then bled the air out of that through that little bleeder bolt. Let's see if it fires. Hey, she runs right away. Woo, beautiful. Woo. And this isn't the best pull in the world, but oh my gosh, it is a night and day difference especially up high in the RPMs. Yeah, this lift pump rocks. So no doubt, this thing pulls a lot better, especially in the higher RPMs, where typically I would be running out of fuel. Yeah, this high volume lift pump was the answer. So thank you so much to the Hungry Diesel. If you start messing with your fuel pin, gov spring, seriously, you're going to want to put one of these high volume lift pumps on. It's easy enough and it makes quite a big difference once you start increasing that fuel demand. Thanks so much for watching guys and we'll catch you on the next one.